Welcome to Hack the Box Quick Guide featuring Optimum. We see it's running HTTP file server, and if we search exploit DB for that, we'll see there is an exploit, actually an RCE, so we're going to want to go ahead and pull that one down and see what it's doing. Basically, it's generating a URI that uh, we're going to use here in a second. We've got to pass in a few parameters. We just got to pass in the IP address, port, and a command you want to run. Now this is a Windows box, so instead of running an ID command, which isn't really going to do anything, I'm going to run a ping command back to our server just to confirm that we have code execution. So I'm going to set up TCP dump to listen for ICMP packets on the TUN0 interface. And if it pings us back, then we know we have code execution. We can go from there. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll run it here. And we do, in fact, have code execution. It pinged our server. So now we're going to grab the invoke powershell tcp one line uh, to get our shell and we're gonna save that as rev.ps1 and going into the file we're just gonna make sure we have our correct uh, ip address of our attacker box and uh whatever port we want to use we use four fours so we're gonna set up our netcat listener on that port next thing that we'll do is we'll just go ahead and fire up our python web server so that it can connect back to this rev.ps1 file and execute the exploit the shell right and then as far as this url we're going to change it to this download string here to download rev.ps1 and so we see the get request come through and then if we check our netcat session we do have a connection back if we run who am i we see we are now the costas user this is a user on the box so we want to try to pivot from there we're going to use sherlock we add this line to the bottom find all volms that way, Sherlock will run the find all volumes check. And uh, we execute that in a similar way. We're just going to do an invoke expression, Sherlock PS1. And it runs this. And there's a number of vulnerabilities, but the first one we see is MS16032. So we're going to start there. Now, if we just Google MS16032 PS1, we can find a PowerShell script uh, exploit for it. And there's a couple findings here. I'm going to go with the Empire one. That's typically a pretty stable solution. So if we view this in the raw format, we can go ahead and easily pull this down. Now, see that example? I kind of I didn't really highlight that, but there's an example line in here which tells you what command we need to add to the bottom of this script. Very important. We'll do that here in a second. First, we got to pull it down. We'll go into Vim, and then at the bottom, we're going to add that example line, ex except we replace for our IP address, right? And uh, we're going to edit rev.ps1 to change it to a different port because we want our uh, elevated shell to be in a different port that's not in use already. So we do that. And then we're going to fire up our Python web server to host this stuff. And uh, yeah, when we go back, you know, setting up our netcat, of course, on the new port, and we'll go back to our, in our original shell and we'll run that invoke expression for the invoke.ps1 file. That should execute this exploit, which is also going to call rev ps1 and connect back to our listener. So first we see the uh, get request there for the invoke, and then the get request for rev.ps1. We see our shell here, and if we look back, we'll also see that, hey, we have a system shell. Uh, and we'll see, who am I? We've now rooted the box.